She's a lot to be late, but not much. Breakfast time at the Volga Hotel in Kostroma. And Michael Hickson from Spennymoor is celebrating his 17th birthday. Happy birthday to you. For him and 19 other Durham teenagers, it's a special day for another reason too. They're all about to spend the next 24 hours with a Russian family. A few have met their Russian hosts previously in England, but none of them has ever been inside a Russian home before. It's a bit nerve-wracking because you don't know whether they're going to speak any English or not. And it can be rather difficult if they don't. And you haven't a clue which family it's going to be? No, not at all. How's your Russian? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> It should be interesting just to see like, how somebody actually lives instead of just sort of wandering around seeing all these historical landmarks in, <laughs> in the Kremlin. And you, do, you don't know which family, of course, you're saying? No. Not yet. Do, do you think there's going to be a language problem, or are you just hoping that... Uh, just pray they can speak English, like, I don't know, we'll muddle through somewhere. I'm going with an open mind, and I think there's a couple more lads staying with the same house as uh, I am. So, you know, it should be all right, I think. I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, but I've got mixed feelings as well because I think it's going to be really hard work if they don't speak any English and I don't speak any Russian. The problems of communication. Because when my Russian girl came to stay with me, Natalia, she didn't speak any English and I could tell it was really difficult for her. And it was difficult for us to try and make her welcome in our home because we didn't know what to say to her. It'll be a good variation on the whole day to stay with a Russian family because we came here to see what Russian life's like. And so if we stay with the family, we'll certainly find out what it's really like. Outside, the Russian families are waiting to collect their English guests. Will they get on? And will they be able to understand each other? There's immediate disappointment for Rachel Dent, whose name is first out of the hat. Others fare better. And there's a warm Russian welcome with smiles, handshakes, kisses and flowers. Vladimir, uh, you're having two English guests staying with you. Uh, are you looking forward to this? Yeah, I will, well, I think that it will be um, action for uh, peace, for friendship. Well, I, <laughs> I think that we'll, we will spend the time very good. And I think that uh, Sharon and Pete will our friends for all uh, life later. I think that I mm, make uh, new friends and this is perestroika. <laughs> <laughs> it is really a new experience for me. Uh, it is a very good practice for me in English. I'm going to be a teacher, a teacher of English. Yes. So you're going to practice on Geraldine? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you? Oh, I'm pleased. He speaks English. <laughs> and I can't speak Russian, so the communications will be better. <laughs> you're dead lucky, aren't you? I am. <laughs> I'm thankful. <laughs> Amanda Proctor from Chesterler Street is spending her day with 15-year-old Natasha Lozitsky, who lives in a second-floor flat in the Sverdlov district of Kostroma. Father Boris is a major in the Soviet Army, Mother Galina an agricultural engineer. The great majority of married women in Russia go out to work. Amanda, this is the first time you've been into a Russian home. Yeah. Just tell me, what are your impressions? It's been really good. I don't think we in England appreciate the amount of stuff that they do have that's similar to us. I mean, you know, you think, oh, they're really backward. They haven't got anything that we have. I mean, they have got quite a bit. I think we've got the wrong impressions back home. So you're, really you're quite impressed with yeah, what you've seen? Yeah, it's quite good. Uh -huh. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I just think everybody was worried about coming. It's been really good all day. Now, what sort of things have you wanted to know from Natasha? Well, we've been asking about the school and the area. Um, the interpreters were asking us about um, England um, politics and things. I mean, um, Natasha was asking me about Margaret Thatcher and we were talking about the Gorbachevs and everything. That's quite good. Yes, and what sort of impressions? I mean, what, what's her view of Margaret Thatcher? Uh, she thinks she's brilliant. <laughs> she's a beautiful lady. <laughs> Uh, keep saying. What questions have you been asking Amanda today? What is your name? 
name your friends, who is your father and mother, have your brother or sister. All questions. Very good. Mm -hmm. Would you like to visit Britain? Yes. Perhaps you'd like to stay with Amanda? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> And Amanda, would you be you'd be happy to have her there? Oh yeah, she's been great all day. Our English has been quite good. All you know, we've managed okay. So, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Russian hospitality is lavish, and Fiona Callaghan from Shildon finds herself sitting down to a meal which includes caviar at more than five pounds a tin, expensive even for Russia. She's guest of the Kromova family, and their daughter Galina, aged sixteen. Father Anatoly is a dentist, and her mother Valentina, an economist. The family are well off by Russian standards. They're an extremely friendly family, they really welcomed us all in, and um, very different to what I expected. Um, what did you expect? I don't know. Generally, I didn't expect them to be as friendly. I expected them to be held back, while they aren't. They're very forthcoming, very welcoming, and very con <laughs> lots of contact and it's really nice. Now what about this flat and its surroundings? Did, did that surprise you? Yes, I was actually. I mean from the outside they don't look very trash but inside it's really warm and friendly and I mean it's just lovely. The decor, I love it. It's really nice. Tell us about your future. What would you like to be? My future profession is doctor. Would you like to go and stay in England? I'm going to England, England and Filona. What is your house like? Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's very nice. It's quite big. Um, it's very detached. <laughs> it's in the middle of a field. Rachel Dent did eventually find a Russian family to take her in. The Forminkos, who have a 15-year-old son, Alex. <laughs> Say something, Alex. What are your first impressions <laughs> of staying with a Russian family? They're very anxious to please everything. They want to do as much as they can for you as possible. I mean, we've been offered food to it probably come out of our ears sooner or later um, and cups of tea up to my up to my neck you know we just um, they're just so they just want, want us to be happy and to enjoy our stay I mean we've been told that they want to have us for the whole week and they don't want us to go home again and they're just really anxious to please yeah now what about the language have you managed to try out any of your Russian <laughs> only my four words <laughs> please thank you hello and goodbye <laughs> <laughs> but, but what have you it's talked about and what sort of questions have they asked you? Um, universal youth topic here, music. <laughs> Everybody wants to know about Western rock groups. <laughs> um, and apart from that, we've talked about the weather, um, whether we liked swimming or not, because we went swimming in the River Volga. Your worst fears have not been realised. You, you're quite happy. No, I had nightmares about total uncommunication. I was sitting there and not being able to make myself understood. Um, but it hasn't been like that at all. And they're not green-eyed monsters. No, not at all. <laughs> the friendships formed between the English and Russian youngsters were cemented further during an evening cruise down the Volga with dancing, singing and games. <laughs> I gave Roman a stereo cassette player and um, beforehand we went into a, an electric shop, well, electric shop, there's only a, a few little things in it and there was a stereo there much more similar to the one I gave him which is £1,500 and um, I had to keep a straight face because uh, I knew that I had a present for him when I got home and of course when I gave it to him, uh, well, the tears started streaming because it was just unbelievable. In England it was about £40. 40 pounds. When John gave you that present, uh, what, what were your feelings? What was your reaction? Oh, <laughs> um, uh, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that these exchanges actually do any good at all? 
definitely very good. Um, we help them, they, they're English. Most, a lot of them do English, which is, which is also surprising. And they, let, they show us that uh, they're not downtrodden people, well, not as downtrodden people as we imagine them to be. Flat. He did not go for hotel. Yeah. He lived in my flat. Yeah. So I'm stopping on. Um, Are you in the flat? Um, the next next to two nights. Are you? Because we got on so well. Um, we've been to the country. Is is Dasha and the garden, and we've seen an awful lot of things. And I, I don't see that there's much point in me going back to the hotel when I've got the chance to spend in time in, in a Russian family. I think the most important thing is that we've actually made a, a friend. Yeah, comrades. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think I think that's the most important thing that's come out of it. The journey to Kostroma takes about five hours by coach from Moscow. You enter the town by crossing the mighty Volga, which tradition says flows in the heart of every Russian. For the next nine days, this provincial capital will be home to 20 Durham teenagers who are breaking new ground in Anglo-Soviet exchanges. This year, for the first time, they'll be spending 24 hours with a Russian family. It's never been tried before. Durham's Twin is a large and mainly modern industrial town with a population of nearly 300,000. It's 20 years since the first Durham travellers passed this way, long before chinks of light appeared in the Iron Curtain. And here we are in Revolution Square in the center of Kostroma. Up until a couple of years ago, this was virtually a closed city. You couldn't come here as a foreign tourist unless you were part of an official delegation. With the advent of Glasnost and Perestroika, all that's changed. In fact, we're the first TV crew outside the Soviet Union to come and film here. A civic reception awaits us at the local town hall. Boris Korobov, the acting party chairman, and other officials are there to offer the hand of friendship. In a speech of welcome, Mr. Korobov talks of perestroika and the changes taking place in the Soviet Union. Brian Stoby, leader of the Durham Party, talks of the misconceptions and prejudices that exist about each other's lifestyles. I think it's important for them to see first-hand, through the medium of television, radio, or the press, that friendly contacts can be established between young people of all ages, between older people, and that establishment of friendly contacts can certainly be achieved, as the last 21 years have been testament, between two councils. The formalities end with an exchange of gifts. 16-year-old Paula Byrne from Darlington...